Evil is evil, Stragomor. Lesser, greater, middling. It's all the same. I'm not judging you. I haven't only done good in my life either. But now, if I have to choose between one evil and another, then I prefer not to choose at all. All right. Hey, I'm Danny Boyd, and that is Henry Cavill as Geralt of Rivia in Netflix's The Witcher. He was speaking some of Andrei Sapkowski's famous lines on the absolute nature of evil. And this, this is that same speech, but performed by iconic voice actor, Doug Cockle. Evil is evil. Lesser, greater, middling, makes no difference. The degree is arbitrary. The definition's blurred. If I'm to choose between one evil and another, I'd rather not choose at all. That second version, of course, comes from the acclaimed Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And if you're not familiar with the Witcher video games, that's okay. The Netflix show is decidedly based on Sapkowski's original Witcher series of books and not the games, but for many, many people, Doug Cockle has been the definitive voice of Geralt of Rivia for over a decade now. And when Henry Cavill was cast in a live action show, the news was met with, well, a precedented degree of skepticism. But here's the thing. They released a game called Witcher 3. Oh, um, played that game to the death. I played The Witcher 3 through twice. I'm a big gamer. I'm a big gamer. I'm a big PC gamer as well. I played the games. I, the I books. love the games. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the games as well. I played the video games before reading the books. And Henry Cavill's understanding and conception of the character of Geralt, particularly his voice, was influenced tremendously by Conkle. Oh, that's rough. My sympathies. But come on, these views. If I were to use one example which people can compare to something, it would be the voice. Doug Cockle did his voice in Witcher 3. Fine, I'll get your goat. I was doing a voice at the start of the show and I was like, this isn't working. I need to bring some more gravitas to the voice. And I loved Doug's, Doug's performance. All right, but despite the game's influence on Cavill, despite the similarities that we hear, Cavill's voice for Geralt isn't just some superficial attempt to imitate the game's version of the character. I wanted to make sure I wasn't just going to be a carbon copy of Doug's performance. The lesser evil. And from a performance standpoint, Cavill's voice is uniquely motivated. Fuck. And to understand by what, well, we have to dive a little bit deeper into what it is that makes Geralt. Geralt. She took one look at me, screamed, vomited, and passed out. Yeah. I thought the world needed me too. My mother says you're the offspring of foul sorcery, a diabolic creation, filthy degenerate born of hell. Have you ever been to hell? Now, Geralt of Rivia, of course, is a character of immense complexity with eight books behind him. That's a lot of history and character depth to reconcile in just a few hours of television and only a few lines of dialogue. What's your name? Because it's Geralt. In the books, we have one full book apart from the last short story ish where it's all of Geralt. Basically, Cavill says you've got pages and pages and pages in Sapkowski's stories of just Geralt speaking. And that means a lot of what? A lot of- A lot of complicated nuance and time. To learn all about this character. And so for me, when we're working within the framework of the show, Lawrence brought her own vision. That's Lauren schmidt Hisrick, the Witcher showrunner. And her own lens. And so- I spoke a lot less. Now it is worth mentioning that this is something that would actually evolve in the show's second season. It's all wrong! My curse is lifted. You're free now. As much as Lauren's vision would allow, this season I campaigned incredibly hard to make sure that the Geralt from the books 
existed more so within the show to make sure that that intellectual nature came across, that philosophical lean and the soulfulness of the character. And they've arrived at nothing except true love. But in first introducing this version of the character? I wanted to lend a gravitas and have that essence of who the character is, which is a very direct, very cold, straightforward person. Qualities, Henry Cavill stated, he thought his natural voice didn't quite convey right. Didn't quite portray what I wanted Geralt to portray in those in those brief moments, whether it be a grunt or whether it be a single word or a couple of words directed at a bard. Do you mind if I hop up there with you? It's just I'm not really wearing the right kind of footwear. Don't touch Roach. But it isn't just tone, and it isn't just pitch. Within the world of The Witcher, there is another detail to Geralt that finds its way both into Game Geralt's voice and Show Geralt's voice, albeit in slightly different ways. Oh, fun. White hair. Big ol' loner. In the stories, an innate aspect of being a Witcher is being viewed as an outsider, an outcast. There's a quality of otherness reflected in Geralt especially, in his white hair, his scars, his pale skin, and then his voice. A voice the books describe simply as unpleasant, but identifiably foreign. Geralt hails from a place in the fiction called Kermoran, but uses an accent adopted from the city of Rivia, from which the character takes his name. And of course, The Witcher being a piece of literature, all but one could say for certain how a Rivian accent, particularly an adopted one, really sounds, but game developer CD Projekt Red's approach to this sense of otherness through a voice was kind of interesting. If I were to choose between one evil and another, I'd rather not choose a flub. That's called a flub. They opted for an American voice. Challenge me again. Raise your hand, draw your sword, look at me the wrong way, and I'll kill you. And it's a voice that contrasts quite starkly with the primarily British, Irish, and Eastern European voices found throughout the rest of the games. Always had a liking for the smithy. I'd sit there all day taking things in. The heat of the furnace, the smell of the hot steel. A distinction, obviously then only further accentuated by the unusual way that Conkle deepens the source of his natural pitch for a sort of gravelly whisper. Why'd you leave? And so too, Cavill dropped his register. Devils don't exist. But a bit concerned that an American accent might sound a bit modern in a fantasy setting, at least in television, Cavill says that instead he added blends of other accents into his own to create an amalgamation of something that he believed, in his own fashion, would convey to audiences that distinct essence of Geralt's character. Why not kill them? Because then, I am what they say I am. Now, I'd, I'd be remiss in not making very clear that Henry Cavill and Doug Cockle are by no means the only voices to bring the character of Geralt to life. Peter Kenny famously narrates The Witcher audiobooks. Evil is evil, Stregobor, said The Witcher seriously. You've got the game's original foreign language actors. And in 2001, the stories received their first on-screen adaptation in the Polish film the Hexer. Nie, rycerzu. Żeby uratować smoka, trzeba pozabijać ludzi. Ja tego uczynić nie mogę i nie chcę na to patrzeć. Przykro mi. But hey, whoever your preferred Gerald is. There's an enormous difference between us, but it's not about status. I'm Danny Boyd. It's about me having two swords on my back and you having none. Thanks for watching.